Well, good morning. It's 7.09. This is morning wake up with presidential candidate Michael Crosby. I'm going to talk today some more about uh, how these charges are coming down and, and moving forward, how these basically rigged elections in California work, basically. Uh, a lot of, there's an array of different types of charges, but the, the real big serious charges are archival charges. They're archive violations. And they're different. They're different than uh, what we've seen with Biden. They're different than what we've seen with Trump because these also deal with violence. Violence. So when you're dealing with archive attacks, attacks on archives, these are considered acts of war. These, this is when you have the strongest penalties uh, in, from the Constitution and articles that there are. This is death penalty area. Uh, this is some of the biggest areas that you can look at. And so we, today we have a lot of people, they have abandoned the Constitution. They have really abandoned law in many ways. They, they have just forgotten about what is the decent main line of what law should be. And this is important for people to understand that we have lost track of reasonable responsibilities being in certain places. You know, I mean, in life, many people can do what they want. You can be an artist on the beach. Uh, you can do kind of anything, you know. But when it comes to certain government jobs, uh, if you basically want the paycheck and you take the job, you have responsibilities that you have to live up to. You take oaths. You're supposed to do certain things. So if we talk about a lot of different types of jobs that are out there, a lot of types of management, you know, anytime you have certain types of governmental level or large government, large state, large city, uh, you, you have uh, basically a series of difficult items and uh, they have to be dealt with, you know. I mean, you know, basically, I think a lot of Americans, they understand that when you take a job, you're supposed to do your job. You know, that's pretty, pretty plain and simple. I mean, generally, if you don't do your job, you get fired. You know, now some jobs are a bit more, well, they're different than what a lot of people might think that they are, you know. I mean, you might be taking a job where you have to manage people in harsh conditions. You know, and this can be, you know, anybody that has to manage people in harsh conditions, you know. If you have to manage, for instance, people in a desert region, you know, first of all, you're asking a lot of people to say, hey, look, uh, I'm asking you to perform and to stay sharp uh, in the desert, in the desert. So, which could be kind of hard, hard to do, you know, when it's hot, you know, it's hot. Now, you know, what can get worse is, are you getting paid a reasonable amount of money? You know, so uh, that's another issue in itself. And uh, my campaign addresses uh, the problems and, and, and items that I feel that, uh, that most people basically in life have, have been getting cheated, virtually all of them, uh, out of their original constitutional rights, their stock, their, their, their residuals, their guaranteed new home loan construction. You know, and, and you have a, you know you have a lot of different areas out there. You, if if I wanted to say, look, you want to look at a tough job, firemen, fire people. You know, I mean, you got California, you've got uh, you've got regions all over North America, including including Canada. And when you're asking somebody to be a firefighter, uh, there, yeah, there's different types of firefighters. You got med techs, you got this that, but. For a moment, you need to get real enough to understand when you're asking someone to be a firefighter, you're not asking somebody to walk into hell. You're asking them, would you have a problem running into a blast furnace? And by the way, if the wind changes direction, you'll get burned up faster than you could jog across the street. No joke. You know, so you're asking a lot. 
you're asking a lot, you know. So, you know, obviously firemen, if you really look at some of the jobs that they do, that's you, that's going to be about the bravest job that I've ever heard of because it's not the same as running into a bad guy and you can try to predict what's going on and have a chance. It's all of a sudden the conditions just change and in seconds, in several minutes, you go from fighting a fire to uh, basically uh, being burned down into a, a crisp. And there are those who basically ride the cups on the, the, this whole situation, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day. It, it's about the most dangerous, hardest job that you could ever try to handle, you know. And the one thing that, that people want in many states, I know in California, you would like your forest saved. You know, you want to keep your trees. And um, so there it is on the firefighting one, you know. So so when, when uh, you know, it, it'd be nice if a lot of people would understand more when some of us say we need to do some big water projects because water just happens to be like a really big item if you're going to deal with fire, you know. And, and making sure that, that there's water and moisture uh, is very important, very, very important. So that having been said, people on the whole, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that people expect. There's a lot of honor that many people give certain other people, you know. And when you have situations where people's jobs are supposed to be done and they don't do their job, it's a bad situation and we have certain areas where if people aren't doing their job people are going to wonder why aren't they doing their job you know what what is the problem what's going on uh, how are things screwed up so so when we're talking about the relationship to uh, major archive violations you know destructions and attacks upon archives uh, acts of war destruction attack upon candidates acts of war and it comes into basically your secretary of state's office for your state such as california we have shirley weber you know that is is crucially uh, important to doing a job unfortunately that's not what we've had in california so what we've had in this situation uh, to to try to reduce it i mean a lot of people they get really bored if I went into all the different little complexities of law. So the reality is, people want it on the quick. Can can you give it to us on the quick? Just real quick here, you know. And the real quick is is kind of still hard to give and explain it adequately, where people would understand how it comes down to to it fits in this 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 set of of holes and these pegs and and all this other that all fits together. And so the thing is, when, when you're a candidate and the state owes you money and you also get involved in, well, politicking, you go out there and you do, well, I mean, some of the hard jobs too, you go out door to door, you're out there in the field, you're out there working in the heat, in the heat, getting signatures, you know, so you're out there doing your job and you know you change different positions you know so if I'm somebody that wants to be basically in charge and say yeah hey yeah I'm, I want to be the big guy the big guy that means I have to do a lot of research and that means that in the course of my learning experiences in life I owed something to the average citizen and that is to go walk a mile in their moccasins and see what their job was like do some of their job and I've done that I've done that so you know if, if, if I went through life and says yeah and someone say say hey have you ever shoveled shit I could look him straight in the eye and say I didn't like doing that but uh, yeah I did that before and I'm like okay you know so you know when you have these various areas of what have you done says so, well you know, I've done petitioning, you know, in, in the hottest part of the summer, you know, uh, and the hottest days that you can have uh, uh, 
in California. You know, I've done politicking out there, talking with people in the hottest part of the summer in Arkansas. I wasn't doing petitions. I was going out talking to people about what they need, what they want. And I was also doing a lot of work where I was hauling things to auction. You know, I would, I would haul computers to auction that I was putting together. And I, I, um, I, w I was asked before to, to actually show my technique to a, a tech class because the college professor that basically ran the department was very impressed. He saw what I was doing, and he thought it was incredible because he says, you just, he says, you fix more computers in the course of two or three hours than I've ever seen before. You know, this, that's quite a technique that you have to work with computers by the pallet, you know. So I, I gave a little short uh, exposure of how it's done. So uh, basically, I would be out there doing this, and uh, basically... Um, I would take computers and sell them regardless of loss, regardless of loss. And a lot of people would show up. You have a lot of these really neat auctions that people kind of never went to in life in a lot of places. But there's a lot of places in the country, they even still have them. And it's like a community thing. And people show up and they spend their nickels and their dimes. And you just never know what you might get, <laughs> you know. So. Um, yeah, I, I did a lot of that, and it was an interesting way to run the nonprofit, uh, basically. And, uh, you know, because my labor was not really getting covered. It was not the kind of job where you can say, How did the paycheck work for you? Uh, paycheck, what's that? <laughs> not so good, you know. So uh, a lot of the uh, volunteer type work uh, that you would do associated with nonprofits and even the process of elections does not have that guaranteed paycheck with it that you might think. And uh, so, yeah, so I would, I would take these, these computers to auction and sell them. And basically, people would pay taxes on them. And in many cases, running back and forth, acquiring the parts and stuff, didn't always have a use of the wholesale numbers. So uh, basically, it was very important to keep a hold of the receipts because what ended up happening frequently was you would double pay taxes. Taxes would get double paid uh, in the collection pool for the activity that I was doing. So some people were confused about how did that work on some of the nonprofit that I did, and I, I explained the auction angle. I says, yeah, I'm buying stuff and then selling it at the auction. The auction collects the taxes on it, and then I have to deal with all the receipts. So there's a lot of people going, wait a minute, uh, you, then you don't have the, the normal style of what people would perceive uh, with paying taxes the way other businesses would. I says, no, the structure is completely different. And I have to deal with the, the, the problem that there's constantly situations because it's a mobile situation. You're, you're, you, you never know when you're, you're, where your resource auction's at. You know? And uh, you know, so you have to keep track of all this stuff. Uh, you know, because uh, you have to make sure that you're not in a double pay situation. So you have all of this, this paperwork and these receipts. Of course, that run in, runs into the situation where you have uh, problems with theft and uh, your, your receipts get stolen and this and that, you know. So, but uh, <clears throat> that was some of the jobs that I did. You know, getting 10,000 computers to basically a lot of low-income families because that's how people did things in life seriously they they would do what they could do and they would live in a very creative way and I would go to places I went to auctions where you had to drive on a dirt road to get there there are places in America that would have auctions you would have to drive on a road a dirt road to get there you would not think that there is a community out there and there's a small city there's a small town and people will come from many miles around that live in areas that don't even have roads so I've had people says well what's it like driving on some of those small dirt roads I says uh, well uh, I'd lose about two tires a month does that help you out <laughs> whether they were new or not and it always hurt when you had a tire and says I just bought that <laughs> and now it's run so uh, moving on though um, so when you're in a situation and you have to deal with very creative ways of how you 
you deal with things, you know. And the state orders your business shut down. In other words, uh, we're, yeah, we're shutting down all auctions. Uh, we're shutting down all congregating. Only the most essential is allowed because of the pandemic. So, you know, you do things like, well, you know, you go out and do petitions, you know. So, uh, basically, I was trying to get the information, the evidence, uh, which was at the Secretary of State's office. They control the evidence for petitions. And, of course, obviously, the information of the signatures and people who are on these things, including the petitioner, when you sign your pages and you certify where you did that, petition, that information is in control by the Secretary of State's office. So when you have someone like Julie Sue, the EED, uh, not actually communicating, uh, failing to communicate, and you're using three phones, and this is not just day after day, week after week, this is month after month, trying to get through on phones when they have basically blacklisted, they deliberately blacklisted people's phones. Uh, so there's different area codes, whatnot, and there's even the the we've been proven proved blacklisting of certain names. You'd put certain names in the system, boom. Their computer would all of a sudden not react or say rejected. And this is this is some really screwed up stuff. Uh, and then we have the situation: thirty-one billion dollar fraud, and massive amounts of money just dumped right out of the United States. And, you know, you could get through. Now, this is, you could get through if you say, oh, yeah, I, I'm not a citizen. You're going to get right through. Snap. They're going to pay you constantly. They always, apparently, they always had money for that area. Uh, other, time, other times you get through and you go, hey, look, I, 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 you know, and you get through, okay, I need to get my stuff done. Oh, we ran out of money for that area. We can only hand out money to people who are non-citizens right now. It's going to be like three weeks before we get some more money in, you know, and this kind of stuff. You know, so you're tolerant and you wait, but the bottom line is that uh, the laws are specific. You cannot attack uh, the income of a candidate under any circumstances. This is the Constitution and Articles, or that's an act of war. That's an act of war. You're not allowed to attack the income of a candidate. You know, this is big boomba stuff, you know, big, big stuff. So, when you you try to get the Secretary of State to cooperate, you know, and you're, you're, you end up uh, calling them up, you end up sending them emails, you do filings, you do a file, emergency filing, you know, actions this day type of stuff, and uh, they don't respond. They don't care. You talk to them on the phone, they don't care. You hear endless excuses about uh, doing uh, paperwork and, and complaints certain ways that work or don't work sometimes, or you have no idea. You gave them something, they intaked it the way they wanted to intake it, and we don't know where it is. You know, and, and it's, a, it's a ridiculous thing, you know. You know, yeah, just, just send us this, and in three to six weeks we'll review it and decide whether or not we're going to do something. Uh, you can't do that. That's against the law. You can't do that to a candidate. So what we end up having is a system of blacklisting and a system of people who are failing to do communications properly. You know. And these items, you know, the communication problem has been proved before the United States Senate. You know, fraud was proved by uh, many investigators. Even the United States Secret Service uh, did an investigation pertaining to uh, what was up with the Julie Sue situation. And that's not over with. There's a lot of places that has to go. My invest investigations got fairly extensive and, you know, to deal with, you know. So uh, so when you're dealing with people uh, that owe you money and they've ordered absolutely everything shut down, and, you know, the thing is the people you also would do business with, they're shut down too. So you watch their businesses get destroyed, your business gets destroyed, you know, and it's really hard when you have your business basically being a nonprofit where you don't even get the right paycheck. You're not even really getting paid, you know. So, uh, 
which in some states, you know, you couldn't you couldn't do certain things the way I do certain things. They changed all the laws. California recently changed the laws where you're only allowed to do four hours of volunteer work unpaid in the course of a week. They put new laws on that. Well, that was always problematic, you could say, because, it, you know, things just didn't necessarily work that way to where the money was going to come out the way uh, the books would want to be done, so to speak, the way other people would do them. Not that they... So my stuff was still all legal. Of course, there's these other problems with people doing blacklisting, and it goes back uh, a lot of years, basically, and a lot of different players. So if we go all the way back to 2008, 2005, you know, I have all this activity, and we go forward to 2012, 2014, you know, you have all these periods. The... The fluctuation in dealing with archives and stuff like that is is enormous. The the you're talking uh, different types of seasonal gig business factors, and you're talking about uh, people breaking the law, people uh, blacklisting you, people giving you harassing you, giving you illegal tickets, uh, and this comes from different types of stuff that also you have the state-level discrimination, state-level blacklisting. And this has been proven repeatedly, but what ends up happening is people settle out of court, and then they want to they cover it up. They, that's why they want to settle out of court, because they want to cover up the truth. They don't want the public to see the truth when somebody did blacklisting, and they want to leave the people who are criminals at large still doing their criminal conduct. Uh, so, uh, you know, moving forward here, so when you say to Shirley Weber, the Secretary of State, and these various people, look, um, I'm being blacklisted by Julie Sue, by the EDD, and uh, that's illegal. That's an act of war. You cannot blacklist a candidate from getting money that's owed to them. You know, Congress has ordered this money, and I need the money. Uh, to compensate because I need the money to get on the next ballot sequence. This is how this works. You know, you can't shut down the income of a candidate and say, "Oh, well, we have these huge fees for these things." Oh, you can't make the fees. Oh, you're off the you're off the the ballot. Uh, no, that's called blacklisting. Uh, that is a major crime. And into this, when you tell people also, you know, you 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 have to make sure uh, investigate and want to press charges against these people. And they don't want to do their job. So here we have people at the Secretary of State's level that don't want to do their job. It's a problem. Because this is the process of elections. This basically means that one way or another they can control the entire election. This is called rigging elections. So when we have the California special election, I could not run as governor as I normally would run as governor, you know. And as things have moved along progressively, the, the archives would go up and down with various fluctuations. There would be different styles of donations sometimes, uh, different situations involving auctions. And uh, basically the archive uh, and the work of the archive had a lot of other areas I worked on. I worked on very major cutting-edge computer design stuff, AI, a bunch of different stuff. And a lot of these deal with the subjects of, well, the information that I learned from American citizens of what do they need? What's wrong uh, with the nation? What's wrong with the country? You know, so uh, the most advanced research, in my view, ever developed was in that archive. You know, so... Uh, my plans, I did, when I lay out my plans into the largest computers in the world right now, I say, this is what I'm doing, this is the right plan, this is the plan that's going to work for the economy. AI says I'm the best candidate in the history of the world, that I have the most advanced plan that makes the most sense. So yada yada, that's what you got here. So we have people who are blacklisting me, and there's, you know, I'll, I'll spare you some of the other adventures in life and the stuff about uh, uh, being doxxed by the Russians and all this other stuff. But So we have people that aren't doing their job at the Secretary of State's off who basically have rigged elections. So California rigged an election. They rigged the special 
election. So the way that was set up, the way that works is, is that you basically had a recall going for Newsom. Uh, the statistics were pretty strong. I mean, the way I was looking at it, it looked like he was going to get, I thought, it, you know, loosely the way I was doing uh, uh, statistics, that he was going to get, oh, 50, there was 58 to 60 percent of the people were just going to say, no, we're not going to recall Newsom. But you had a separate section on the ballot, and that was for the uh, stand-in emergency uh, gov gubernatorial candidates. And this is the real election. So uh, they blacklisted me from being on the ballot. And the way the, the election goes, Newsom would not allow to be both a candidate for governor and also a subject of recall because either he's recalled or he's not recalled. So if he's not recalled, then he's still the governor and all these candidates become not available for the emergency backup gubernatorial position, uh, which would have been a short term because then you've been, been going into another election cycle. But uh, yeah, so, so that's the way that works. So it would be redundant to have him in two places. So uh, the most popular person at the time uh, for governor was Newsom. And uh, the me firing up my vehicles to go out there and say, okay, boom, we're going to sit out there and we're going to have four to six RVs uh, hitting the road. Um, I'm sorry, no. Uh, that, that was the previous. That's the previous one. Yeah, I was going to set out this time, and I had 14 RVs. I was going to put at least a dozen of them on the road, uh, going on and off the freeway system with my name on the side. So the statistics of the way this would work. Uh, from other stuff I've done in the past and sampling is that one million people a day uh, would have seen me available as a gubernatorial candidate uh, in California. Uh, these statistics came up to where I figured I would probably get about 38 percent of the vote. Uh, the computer analysis of tendencies, number of vehicles, uh, processing capabilities, uh, you know, number of, number of web domains purchased, website styles. I was overkill on these. You know, number of mobile units and mobile broadcast units. I was overkill on this. So, uh, basically, um, starting out my campaign, the computers had analyzed this and said, "Well, there's no way that you would have got less than 22 percent of the vote with the with your previous activity combined with the understanding of the volume, the size of your archive fleet." And, uh, you know, based upon, now based upon the statistics and my handling, uh, indicated that I should have gotten 40 to 45 percent of the vote. I should have actually, according to the computers, they, they believe I would have won the secondary uh, gubernatorial section. But it seemed to indicate they really felt, felt that I was going to end up with 40, about 40 percent. But worst case scenario, in other words, if you take all of the margins considered at, you know, all the variant ranges down to their absolute minimum. Uh, it took it down to 22%. But now keep in mind, I would have had all these people in California, I would have had more than 10 million voters see my name, see my websites, see me on the ballot, see all those uh, web links to go to the areas where, where I was talking about all the different types of solutions to fix people's lives, which are the items that basically were developed from talking to people, you know, shaking hands with people, rapping with people, finding out what they needed in life, and then working an advanced plan and working with advanced AI uh, computer logics. So, um, you know, so here we go. I had the most advanced plan. And uh, so the, they rigged the election. They blacklisted me out. That's called election rigging. And uh, that's illegal. And it also ties to other actions, which are deemed acts of war against a candidate. And uh, these are in the articles of the Constitution. Now, because I'm also an archiver, um, that's also attack upon an archiver. Again, very, very serious criminal. Now, because of the extreme length and because um, as time went on, uh, my campaign, the archive, would come under attack, under attack. Uh, so I ended up having basically the whole convoy was stranded. And, uh, you know, so 
all this violent attacks would occur and these people would be updated. You know, the EED would get updated, the uh, Secretary of State's off would be updated and say, look, uh, this is a serious problem. I have people violently pursuing me. You know, and I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know if this is connected to the Russians or the Chinese or maniacs or what, but uh, there are, there's extreme violence being uh, focused at me. You know, and these, it just progressed more and more and more. And I says, hey, look, you guys can't continue to be in dereliction of duty. You know, you have to, you have to uh, pay me this money. You've shut down all the businesses and, and all this other stuff and, and shut me down from doing partitioning. Uh, you know, uh, this has to be fixed. And they just didn't care. They would not do their job. And it's more than that. It's more than that because it's blacklisting. And we're still evaluating the blacklisting of what Julie Sue did. And, uh, but beyond the shadow of a doubt, there's no doubt in the investigation that uh, it's very simple. It's all quite and dry, you know. Uh, you cannot attack an, a, a, a candidate's income. That is an act of war. You cannot blacklist a candidate from the ballot. That is a rigged election. So, and, and th those are the most simple ones. There's a lot more that go on beyond that. Literally thousands and thousands and thousands of charges because there's these different things that people didn't do right at certain times. And of course the violence kept escalating against me to the point where I had people shooting at me. You know, this is, this is not fun. You know, so I've been shot at seven times in the course of my life, you know, so um, not my first rodeo, so to speak. And, uh, you know, so, but... Uh, uh, two times were of the recent, were of the last election cycle. So going into this federal election, this basically means that I have a situation where the convoy, my fleet, cannot activate because these people had blacklisted me and done all of this different blacklisting stuff. And all of this has a very heavy section that goes all the way back uh, to Harris, to Harris. And, and uh, that's more complicated to explain. I've explained some of that in other sections on why her previous offices and positions were also involved. So, again, what she's done, she's committed various acts. She's disqualified from the election. Her election is over with. It's done. It's permanently over with. And she's facing a lot of jail time. And this is not a game. This is not a joke. And because she's involved in the whole array, she also faces uh, attack against archive rules and regulations, and that can come with the death penalty. You know, so we're the kind of people that, you know, for years and years, part of the thing with the Harris thing was when we ran into bad cops and they would harass me, the candidate, and I'd say, look, here's the information. This, is, this, this ticket is completely erroneous. This person is put together. And you can't keep doing this to me. You can't keep harassing and telling me and forcing me to schedule operations when I have to run around from state to state as a filed candidate. And you're going to turn around and say, hey, uh, we don't care. Uh, and, and, you know, what is it? It, it? It's more net. It's like, okay, what do you want to do? We can see this information. Right? Well, you guys, first of all, you got to remove it from the computers and the books. I've had this done repeatedly, getting it removed from the books, and then some analyst finds the records and puts it back on the books. They don't do the prosecutorial status where they go to court and say, or make the right, correct notations, because they don't want to put the notations in writing, because then they're admitting their wrongdoing, say. And we also have the other point. We get to the point where I says, well, by the way, yeah, it's, you know, our policy is mandatory prosecution. You know, you don't harass a candidate. Uh, and get away with it. Here are the charges. So we had uh, police officers facing up upwards of 70 years in penitentiary, and we're demanding prosecution move forward. And that's when you keep having the problem with Harris's office refusing to do prosecution. Oh, we don't feel like prosecuting officers. Well, I don't care what you feel like. This is what these, here's the evidence, this is what these people have done, and uh, you have to do your job. And she didn't want to do her job. See, and I'm the candidate, I'm always, look, these people are a threat. These people are at large, and you want to keep them at large and keep them a threat. So you're not just not doing your job. You're not just not, in, not just being in dereliction doing. You're actively aiding and abetting people to escape 
and to be at large and be a continuing threat against a candidate. Yeah, there's a long series of uh, violations connected to that. And this, that's part of the reason that um, Harris's campaign is completely over with. It's ended. You know, I'm, you know people, people are like, I never heard of that. Well, it's not my problem. It's not my duty to pull $30 million out and buy major advertising time nationwide just to explain to people that these different people are going to jail. Now, the dereliction of duty and the refusal and the threatening coming from these other agencies, that has to stop. That has to stop. These people can't be trusted. We've got too much evidence too many times on these other people that have been cross-associated with blacklisting. And this whole thing's a no-brainer. It's just a big no-brainer. You know, and they don't want to comply with the proofing. They're doing everything they can not to do this. And this is, they're, they're, this is a heavy end where you end up with the heavy end going AG's office again still current. So here we have California. You know, here I've been filing paperwork depositing in Washington, D.C., and it's just waiting for me to trigger. It's just a trigger. You know, I can, I can do a trigger doc, one trigger document that says I'm authorizing uh, this file area to be allowed open for inspection uh, to congressmen, senators, whatever. And that becomes the end uh, of basically a lot of people's careers because into this basically are the motions where I'm going foul. So basically I filed fouls, which means that California delegates, according to the law, these items involving uh, attacks against candidates are specifically noted in the Articles and Constitution. They must be completely resolved to the full, full volition before delegates are allowed to be counted or certified. This is the law. This is the Constitution of the United States. So we have all these people that are talking about this, that, and the other thing, and all these other things. And so we have all this lap, these, these overlapping concerns where basically California delegates cannot be apportioned to Kamala Harris because they've already got a rigged election from the special election and they don't want to resolve it. And they want to move forward into an, yet again another election sequence continuing their blacklisting and not covering uh, the situation. So basically it's impossible for Kamala Harris and California delegates to make it past me. I'm blocking them uh, from being counted uh, in Congress first stage Congress, they can't be counted. I'm registering a foul. Hello, hi, how are you doing? Foul. So, yeah, you know, so notices have gone out. Uh, there are some key Congress people and senators that have already been notified. And um, this is basically the end. When you add the final bit to, you know, I'm, I, again, I'm dumbing this down incredibly and simplifying, but let me put the cherry on top of the cake. Okay. In the archive, we have information pertaining to national security. Okay. The policy on that is you must immediately retrieve that information. When you have authorities that say they don't want to roll on that, then they're aiding and abetting other parties, and that's the only reason they don't want to roll on it. It's mandatory. Mandatory for fingerprints, mandatory to roll, mandatory to work a certain way. So after a certain amount of time, all of these different agencies have been found to be in dereliction of duty. You know, so this is not funny. This means that your, your local police have failed, your local sheriffs have failed, all these people have failed, and they've been recorded failing. They're toast, they're over with, they're gone, they're in dereliction of duty. You know, and this is exactly what the articles of the Constitution say. You know, exactly what the Constitution says. So, uh, yeah, that uh, basically... Uh, the laws with this, the national security, and each and every, here's the thing, here's their intent. Their intent is they know directly with superior knowledge that every minute, every minute that goes by, that national security is continuously being violated. Now we have archive law into this, in a, another level, multiple levels of archive law, very complicated, lots of charges. We have artifacts that have been stolen, stolen. So to cause and or damage destroyed. These archive laws are specific on the Constitution. Attacking archives, death penalty. 
in a nutshell, just to get to race you forward. You know, causing the loss, destruction of artifacts, again, separate charge, death penalty. There's easily at least three overlapping laws that are death penalty. So now these people have perpetuated their various violations, just snowballing the situation worse and worse, and they're facing this vast myriad of charges, and they're all connected to Harris. So, you know, this is where I tell people, hi, I'm a Democrat, I'm running for office. Can you do the sensible thing? Can you understand the shame at this point in time that members of the Democratic Party have brought upon the Democratic Party? And can you do the right thing? Let's begin the cleanup. Let's get Harris out of the ticket. And I'd appreciate it very much if you'd endorse me. Uh, you know, because, you know, I mean, this, this would obviously be a logical thing to do. AI says I have the best possible design policy, uh, bar none across the design of the table for everything, whether it's national security, defense, economics, uh, uh, health, safety. <laughs> no matter what it is, I've got it all figured out. I've got the best plan. And people, you know, they've laughed at me for, you know, people, some people laugh, you know, say, yeah, we need to do mass economic modeling software. It's going to cost four to six billion a year every year. And we need to do this. And this is me in 2005 and eight running. And people laughed at me. So now today you wouldn't laugh as, as you have 180, 140 some billion dollars uh, being spent, I believe, by China now each year. So. Um, the situation is interesting. It's strange how that happened. So, yeah, so that's what we have. Uh, you have me, who is defined by the largest computers in the world as being the best candidate, bar none, available. And we have these massive laws and massive legal computers that have also evaluated what these people have done, and they're face facing thousands of charges, thousands of charges. Their careers are over with. You know, and we have them still on this struggling point. Oh, well, you have to do this, or you have to do that. Their intent, they're, again, they have superior knowledge, and they're refusing to do the right thing. This brings extra charges on them. This is part of what brings extra charges. It's part of, what, part of what's going to be really hard for them when you get to the penalty phase. The penalty phase was this, look, um, you knew what you were doing all along. You just bowed your neck, and you kept doing it. And this is why people who are that show no remorse, uh, you know, criminals, you know, after conviction and you, they've shown no remorse and then they struggled, they were, they were, they would not cooperate. This is why these people get max penalty, maximum penalty. You know, this, this is what you do with the law system when you have people that don't cooperate, you know, and especially when they have superior knowledge that they knew, they really knew. So we're talking people, a lot of these people, they, they, they went to school, they're legal experts. You know, Shirley Weber, she has what kind of degrees now? Oh, yeah, she knows exactly. She knows exactly what she did and what she's involved in. The computers say, oh, yeah, there's, there's no way she doesn't know what she did. You know, so her career's over with. But meanwhile, people are still struggling. Oh, you have to file this court paperwork a different way or this way. No, I don't. All I have to do is head you off at the pass in front of Congress. Your entire election bid is over. You've rigged elections. You're busted red-handed. And you can't make it past me. I am blocking you from being able to freely go in and lie to Congress. You can't lie to Congress. I'm going public with all of this. You people are screwed. You're over with. You're done. There is no Harris ticket. She's done. She's going to jail for a very, very long time. Julie Sue, going prison, very long time. Shirley Weber, going prison, very long time. People at AG, and there's an array of other people who aided and abetted at these individual offices who also had superior knowledge. Superior knowledge. These people are going to prison for a very long time. You know, me, I'm the guy with the definitive truth. As a willing witness, as a willing witness I use an fMRI lie detector. See, it's impossible for my testimony not to have a definitive bite. And these other people are not going to want to go and utilize a uh, lie detector 
uh, fMRI equipment. They're not going to want to have a bunch of pharmaceuticals put into them and uh, check to see whether they're telling the truth. They're not going to want to do that because they have superior knowledge and they know what they did. And they did it intentionally. And they're screwed. You know, so, you know, they can think about it this way or that way, but not one of them are going to be able to escape dereliction of duty and, well, basically an array of other charges, according to the computers. It's impossible. So that's the morning show. My name is Michael Crosby. I'm running for president of the United States. I have been identified as the best candidate by the largest computers in the history of the world to be the correct candidate for the people and the correct person to do the job that needs to be done. Uh, no apologies for not participating uh, in the beauty contest and the popularity contest the way many people do it. But of course, there were people with superior knowledge who sabotaged my campaign because as it is, 18 vehicles a year ago should have started out, should have started out basically on the road for this sequence and a million people more than a million people a day would have been seeing those campaign vehicles and i would have immediately expanded that fleet because that's kind of the kind of stuff that i do uh that way so it's pleased to meet you uh, i have lots of issues i'm looking forward to repairing america and getting you what you're entitled to because you've all been ripped off as citizens i thank you very much for your time